Hola from Cusco. I made it to Cusco, Peru, and I'm already so excited to explore and see the city. It is absolutely beautiful. There's such a positive vibe to it and just a really cool energy to the city. So excited to take you guys along this journey through the San Cante trek up to Machu Picchu. Good morning. I had a wonderful breakfast, ventured around Cusco, saw the Plaza de Armas, and right now I'm going to go to one of the archaeological sites before the trek. And I gotta say, now that I'm climbing, the altitude is definitely present. I'm like, <sighs> but we're gonna do it, and it's so much fun, and I can't wait to see this archaeological site. It's gonna be so cool. Also, look at this view behind me. So incredible. This site is absolutely incredible. Um, these are remnants of an old um, Incan uh, civilization. I have to read more on it of what exactly everything is behind me, but wow, it's stunning up here. It's beautiful. The air is so fresh. Absolutely love it. It's so quiet. can look at the scale of this behind me. It's so crazy. Oh, it's beautiful up here. All right, this place is amazing. And I'm really kicking myself for having so little time in Cusco because the city has been absolutely incredible and there's so many historical and cultural sites to visit. I will definitely be back to Cusco, but for now, we're gonna hike up and say hi to Jesus. So after a long three hour drive or so from Cusco, we made it to the first campsite and tomorrow we'll be starting bright and early on the Sal Cante trek. Um, and first of all, this is my little cabin and it's great. I was not expecting to have power, so that's awesome. There's a little light and I can charge my phone and my power bank, which is so great. I really enjoyed my day um, in Cusco today, and I'm so excited to start this trek. One thing that is truly incredible are the stars. I went outside and it's almost like you can see all the constellations perfectly because there's so little light pollution up here. It's pretty incredible. I can't wait to see what these next three nights have to offer when it comes to just being outside and seeing the stars. The drive up here was absolutely beautiful. You're like nestled into the mountains, which is amazing. And the clouds are literally like right near you. That's how high up 
you are. You can almost touch it, it feels like. So oh, I'm very looking forward to this hike and I can't wait to take you all along with me. I'm gonna go put on my phone. Even with an iPhone? the track it is so beautiful here look at this oh my god and there are so many hummingbirds around um like landing on the flowers this is absolutely incredible the feeling you get when you wake up and step outside and are just surrounded by giant mountains absolutely nothing beats that this is incredible i can't wait for today's hike So we were able to get um, passport stamps. Um, there was a Machu Picchu, a Salcante, Humante Lake. I went for the Salcante track pass and it's so cool. And it's so fresh, look at that. You can see it perfectly. Absolutely love that. Look at how beautiful it is. There's the glacier. that hill feeling really good and excited to see this lake it's gonna be awesome it's so beautiful up here So behind me is Monte Lake. It's beautiful, has a beautiful turquoise color. <sighs> so gorgeous up here. It was so worth the hike. And I couldn't imagine it doing any other way. Like the gratification you get when you get to the top and you see this beautiful lake. Absolutely wonderful.
to the first little stop. Uh, we have a little bit more to go before lunch and then we go to the Salcante Pass. This part, it's a little tricky. It's very high uphill, um, a lot of rocks, but I'm just taking it slow, one step at a time. Um, it is really beautiful here though. And just gotta remind myself that it's not a race and you just gotta take your time. Kind of a metaphor for a lot of things in life, right? Someone's steady, just keep at it. Let me show you this path up ahead. Yep, pretty crazy, but we're only about an hour away from our lunch spot. Okay, so we made it, had a wonderful lunch, um, and now we have about four more hours of hiking and we are going to go through the Salcante Pass, which is somewhere over there. <laughs> so it was such a beautiful and also challenging hike up here, but it was honestly worth every second of it. Um, you know, you just got to keep telling yourself to keep going and that lunch was so good. I have so much more energy. I feel fueled and we had a lot of hot tea. It was really nice. So now we start our hour and a half trek up through the Sao Cante Pass and then we're downhill for another three, house, three hours until we reach base camp. All right, we are on the last leg of the journey, and I gotta say, this whole valley after Salcante Pass is stunning. It's been my favorite part of the trek so far. It's beautiful, it is downhill, which is really nice. But, I mean, look at the dramatics happening over here. It is so dramatic and absolutely stunning. Um, so yeah, we are just about 10 or 20 minutes or so away from the base camp for the night. Then we're going to have some dinner, get some really good sleep, and start again tomorrow. Okay, we made it to base camp and wow, they just chose an absolutely horrible spot. It's so ugly. This is the most beautiful place I've ever seen. It's gorgeous. Mountains all around, there's a valley, it's forested, and behind me, an absolutely incredible snow-capped mountain. This place is amazing.
I'm just having one of those moments where you're just like, wow, the world is so beautiful. And I love traveling so much and seeing these places. The mountains just give me ah, such a wonderful energy. And this place really is absolutely beautiful. There's no other word for it. <laughs> I'm honestly at a loss for words, actually. So day one of the Sao Conte trek and safe to say it's ending out on a pretty high note. Um, there's dinner and tea tonight, which is great. And then um, we're off tomorrow to the next part. But this day has been so amazing. It started out beautiful when we went to Huamachina Lake. I think I butchered that. I'll put it down below. Um, that lake was absolutely stunning. And then we started our trek up to Sao Conte Pass. And there were moments, of course, where I wanted to stop, turn around. We were going very, very high. Um, it was challenging, but I stuck through it and really just focused on one step at a time. And I think that is kind of the main lesson of this entire year for me personally is just taking things one step at a time and really enjoying life, being present in the moment and not worrying about the top of the mountain, but on the next step that you take, which is a pretty awesome lesson. And then, of course, on the way down Sal Cante Pass, it was absolutely beautiful going through rolling places that look like Scotland with all the moss covered rocks. And then this beautiful valley with mountains surrounding it, cascading over each other with waterfalls and glaciers. And then, of course, at our base camp here, <laughs> this beautiful mountain. Almost day, almost day. He's not telling us. Hi. Quechua could be a... Huh? He's a chico Georgia. Well, I don't know how to say that. Iman Sutiki. I still think he's not going to be able to tell me. Iman Sutiki. Iman Sutiki. He's like, what the hell do you expect me to say to you? This is day two of the Salcante trek. Had a good breakfast, saw a cute dog, and now we're off. <laughs> oh 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> what a good pig. Oh my god. I have a small entourage following me. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> this is crazy. They just started following me. Hi, entourage. Oh my gosh. Hi. Hi, babies. Hi. Literally so funny and so cute. Oh my gosh. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, the best thing ever happened. Our camping site tonight are these adorable little hobbit holes. It's basically making all of my dreams ever come true. And I have to show you guys them because they're absolutely amazing. Look at that, they're so cute. And there's a little garden out in front. And there's the river streaming down below and a beautiful mountain behind it, the hobbit houses. This is literally like the best ever. Hands down, amazing. Look at how adorable these houses are. And of course, our little posse of dogs followed us. Yeah, there they are. And then there's the beautiful mountain behind us. And then the stream down below. And look at all the flowers are so pretty. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me show you inside my hobbit hole. There we go. Look at how fabulous this is. I know it's kind of low lighting. Switch lenses here, there we go. Look at this though. The floor is absolutely beautiful. There's my little bed and the ceilings. And here's the light, the light switch. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. I could live here. This is my favorite thing ever. Look at this door. Oh, it's so cute. I can't. This is amazing. And there are light switches or uh, power sources, which is great. So we can charge all the things. So, hell yeah. Okay, so there's also a hot tub. So I'm going to get changed and go in there because that sounds absolutely amazing. Oh, look how red my nose is. But anyway, I'm gonna go get changed, get in the hot tub, and just relax this beautiful moment of being able to stay in a hobbit hole. Literally, I'm on an adventure. Like, this is it. Like, this is the adventure I've been waiting for, and it's here. Okay, so I'll see you guys in a little bit. Yeah. It is. It is really nice. Any season? After the dry season. After the dry season. Because that's when the grasses are yes, dry? Yes, the grass is just dry. Yeah. You can see now.
tres destillos. Like an orange. This is the Thing on the coffee beans. Did you try it before? No? Did you try the beans? The coffee beans? No, he did. Did you try to open that one? It is a really good one. Yeah, it is. Oh, it's to peel them. Is the peeling? Yes, it's an artisanal machine that these people are making. You can take it as a green vest. No, 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 no. no. Oh, okay. To this side is coming the clear peel. Oh, makes much more And sense. to the other side. Before they roast them. Yeah. Mm. We don't have too much coffee at this season. The still making. Looks like the right color, I'm just saying. <laughs> We're not burning, are we? Yeah, chicos. Yes, I smell, it smell now. And you can try. Wow, it smells really good. But it's better when you have this type of colors of this color. Oh, beans. okay. This is the 25-30 days. Yeah, no, this but it is better. Yes, yeah, it's a process. She's gonna to peel all of these things. Mm. You're gonna to do all of these things in this and I have in this pot. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Yeah. 
Coco. Yo pensaba que fue. Fueron cacahuetes, pero no. Arroz. Con. It looks so good. It looks really good. If you can't finish, it could be something. After visiting the local farm and learning how to make coffee and eating some amazing food, we then ascended upwards to our base camp that was right in front of the Machu Picchu mountain range. All right. So we had our lunch and started our hike again. And it was a really nice section of the hike. It was a lot of uphill in the mountains, but I was able to find a really good groove. I was just kind of counting in my head using my poles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that was kind of my pace and it worked out really well because um, that seemed to be a really good pace for me. We made it all the way up here and this is crazy. We were literally above some of the clouds. It's insanity. Let me turn the camera around and show you guys. This is the current view. We are literally in the clouds. Let me show you over there. Here's the mountain. Crazy. We had such a yummy lunch today. Um, it was really good. And we also went to a farm and um, saw avocados growing, bananas growing, coffee growing. And then she uh, made us some coffee, which was really, really fun. And I don't usually drink coffee, but I did drink um, a small cup because I'm not gonna miss out on uh, freshly brewed <laughs> coffee, you know, from the garden. And it was honestly really good. I had to put some sugar in it <laughs> because it was a little too strong for me, but it was really, really tasty. Um, I loved it a lot, so it was fun. And wow, I'm just sitting here watching the clouds part and it's absolutely beautiful. So worth the uphill climb. <laughs> Wait, which one? This one? Okay, so we are at a point where we can see Machu Picchu after a very steep uphill climb. We made it to this beautiful valley behind me. And it's pretty stunning. And when we got here, the clouds were covering the entire valley, so we couldn't really see well. But finally, the clouds have started to lift so we can see a little bit of the mountain. And it's super exciting and super gratifying to see um, how far that we've hiked and that we will be hiking up to Machu Picchu soon. It's so cool. So you can see it's starting to clear up the valley. And right there, that is Machu Picchu. <laughs> Doesn't know what to focus on. There we go. That is Machu Picchu. Right there. This beautiful valley over here. They don't need that. Five hundred years ago, this is considered the first mestizo. Sí. He wrote about this, La Florida del Inca, where these people make the awesome archaeological site called Llactapata, or Gaina Picchu, but no Machu Picchu.
Well, we made it to the base camp for tonight and wow, what a just horrible, awful view. This place is incredible. It is so beautiful. It's surrounded by the mountains. I honestly don't know what's been my favorite base camp because they've all been incredible, but this is like, wow. <laughs> wow. Let me turn the camera around and show you guys because it is really incredible. Yep, those are our little tents. And here is the view. Yeah, just, oh, tragic. Oh my god, look at it. It's ridiculous. It's so pretty and the sky opened up. You can actually see blue sky. It's incredible. There are just mountains surrounding us. 360 degrees. What a view. Okay, there's a little viewing point up ahead. So I'm gonna walk over there and it is so clear. It's ridiculous. It is so clear. You can see outlines of the beautiful mountains. It's kind of insane actually. I am just in absolute awe of this camping site. It's so beautiful. So I'm gonna show you the little viewpoint here and get some more pictures. I think 90% of my camera roll is gonna be this campsite and for good reason, cause damn. I'm going to the viewpoint here. Just all so disgustingly ugly. <laughs> wow. This is everything. Absolutely everything. It's worth everything. Every dollar, every second, hiking up this upwards very steeply. It's worth it all. is starting to set and there's a beautiful light pink
blue color along the mountain. After a good night's sleep under the stars and surrounded by the mountains, we woke up and had a wonderful breakfast. They even made us a cake to commemorate our last day of the South Conte track. This for you. It is just with butter. This is a yelly yelly. Okay. For me. All right, it is day number three easy day we hiked about two hours down and now we have about three hours to aguas calientes we're in hydroelectrica right now hopefully we get to see the waterfall that'd be really cool but once we get to aguas calientes in about three hours then the rest of the day is just kind of to relax take a nice hot shower and then watch you pichu tomorrow we've been walking pretty flat um, on this path close to the train tracks, the train that takes people to Machu Picchu. And uh, it's been really nice. We're gonna find a spot to eat our lunches and then we get to just relax in Aguas Calientes. So it's kinda nice because it is flat. It is a little bit hot today, so I put on extra sunscreen because my nose got really burnt the first day. Um, but yeah, I was hearing a lot of sounds in the forest and uh, just enjoying this nice walk until we get to the town. After our trek along the train tracks through a beautiful jungly area, we finally made it to Aguas Calientes, the base town for Machu Picchu.
finally made it to Machu Picchu and it's absolutely amazing. The sun is bright out today. The clouds are just lightly scattered about and there's barely any people here, which is so incredible. We basically have Machu Picchu to like ourselves. It's absolutely incredible. What a beautiful day to explore this amazing site. So beautiful and it's so crazy that we have it all to ourselves it's incredible Times or like a seasons where they are projection of the shadows. Mm. First, 21 or June 21st, they can project these shadows to this sector. They can understand that they are on the winter or summer equinox or solstice, if you like to know, like that one. As well, at what, at what time they could be with this projection of this sundial. Yeah. To 1983. One king and queen from Spain, they just like to visit much beach. Yeah. Big. There's really not a whole lot of people here. Right, I'm hiking up Machu Picchu 
mountain and it is taking a bit i'm a little tired but we are getting there and i bet the view is going to be so cool so all right we're moving right along All right, so I made it pretty far up the mountain. I think I'm probably gonna stop now. Um, I think my headspace is just kind of not in the right place. There's been a lot of reportings of protests and stuff like that. The Cusco airport is actually closed down, so I'm not quite sure when I'm gonna get home. So I think that's kind of just been in the back of my mind on top of that you know, after five days of hiking, just being a little bit tired, but it is really beautiful, and it's crazy, because I feel like we have this whole place to ourselves, because the trains in Jacuzco are not running, so it's, like, beautiful and serene, but at the same time, it's, like, a little weird, like, even now, looking down at Machu Picchu, you, I can't see anybody, it almost looks abandoned, which is crazy, but... You know, I think it's important to include this part in the video because, you know, I've had such a wonderful trip. Like, I absolutely love the Amazon rainforest and that whole experience in the Treehouse Lodge. I love walking around Cusco, and I really enjoyed this five-day hike up to Machu Picchu, and being able to see the Citadel in person was so cool, but... You know, I don't want to just glorify it. I also want to leave in the parts that are that are stressful. I feel like this trip um, was a lot of anxiety just because, you know, there are no guarantees because the political situation here is a little bit unstable. So, you know, it was a little bit challenging. You know, I had some doubts and worries on airplanes and getting to and from places and just being like constantly on guard and just making sure that you know you're okay and everybody I met here has been so lovely absolutely amazing um and the tour guides and the locals that we've got to talk to have been absolutely incredible but you know there's still that level of making sure that you're staying safe and taking care of yourself so yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. So, you know, I would have loved to just run to the top of this mountain, take a beautiful video and pretend that it was easy and that, you know, nothing is bothering me. But I feel like I need to include this part. Um, just, you know, when you travel, you're not alone. You're going to have stress. You're going to have um, things that might give you anxiety. And I think it's just too push through that and just do everything you can to make sure that you stay safe and that you know we're gonna figure it out when the time comes and for now just enjoy the moment so I might climb a little bit more I might just sit here and enjoy the view but anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching see you later so I just wanted to provide a little update video after that whole happened Basically, um, a couple of days before the start of the hike, what happened in Peru is the uh, president got arrested. And so there were a lot of protests and things um, happening in the area. So they couldn't run the train that goes from Aguas Calientes back to Cusco. So because there were like rocks and things in the tracks because they were trying to, you know, the people were protesting, you know, I'm obviously not going to try and understand the political situation in Peru. But um, so what ended up happening after that was the so I, we got back from Machu Picchu and they actually told us that we were the last people like let into Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu actually closed for a time um after we were there which is like crazy so we um yeah so we get on the bus we head back to Aguas Cayentes that night I sat in a little restaurant with my little group and ate an entire pizza 
uh, by myself, and it was fabulous, and we watched the uh, FIFA World Cup. It was kind of funny, because every place in the town just, like, shut down to watch the soccer game, so it was, it was kind of cute. Um, but yeah, so then the following day, our tour company actually let us have a free night hotel to stay in Aguas Calientes, which was so sweet of them. And then the following day, we hiked nine hours or something crazy like that in the direction of Cusco because the train was shut down. And the only way out of Aguas Calientes was either like a the train, you're hiking, or you're taking like a helicopter. <laughs> so we decided we weren't going to wait for the helicopter. So we got up at like four in the morning and started walking back along the train tracks towards Cusco. And we walked for maybe like eight hours, nine hours until finally um, the Alpaca Expedition bus came and picked us up. Um, and yeah, and then we drove the rest of the way back to Cusco. It was a truly crazy adventure. We walked with all of our stuff because we didn't, you know, we didn't have porters, which was fine. I'm glad I had the one backpack. So yeah, nine hours walking back and honestly, like looking back on it, I am so, un it's so unfortunate what's happening, the political situation in Peru. My heart goes out to all of the people there. You know, it's such a beautiful country. It's a diverse country. And everybody I met was so incredibly kind. So I hope for their sake that, you know, everybody can, the government there supports the people. That's really, you know, what comes down to it. But I had a really good time, honestly, walking those eight miles, not eight miles, those eight hours. It was like something like a marathon, 26 miles or something. Walking back, it was honestly such a relaxing experience um, and just a crazy adventure. Um, so that night when we finally got back to Cusco, I stayed in a hostel. And then the next morning, I just found the first flight out of Cusco <laughs> back to Lima. So it was a crazy, crazy end to an otherwise like would have been normal trek. Um, but getting to see Machu Picchu you know, with so few people was 100% worth it. And I am so thankful. And Alpaca Expeditions is the company that I went. It is um, owned by Kachman Mann, um, who was a porter. And you can just tell that everybody in the company was just really awesome. Like everybody was super knowledgeable. They were really, really helpful with everything. They made us food. They made sure we were comfortable. So uh, I definitely recommend booking your tour with Alpaca Expedition when you go to Peru. So anyway, now this is the actual end of the video, but I felt like I needed to kind of clarify what ended up happening um, at the end. So, but thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. And remember, adventure starts with you. <laughs>